Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. The number one national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. All right, we're back with you. Tom Gresham, it's Gun Talk. We have so many things to discuss. And frankly, we'll talk about the things that you want to talk about. If you have a range report, something you've taken out to the range, did you get a new gun for Christmas, for New Year's? Want to know about it? Did you take somebody out and introduce them to shooting? Absolutely want to hear those stories, too. It's easy, actually. Just uh, pick up the phone. Give us a call. 866-TALK-GUN or just dial one Tom Talk Gun. I'm also available by email, Tom at GunTalk.com. And over on Twitter, I am at GunTalk, where, of course, you can participate there and find out what's going on throughout the week. So, uh, tell you what, before we get to our guest, I want to get uh, Joe in here from Palmer, Alaska, Line 2. Hello, Joe. Hey, good morning, Tom. You're doing a great job. I was intrigued by your um, listener who wrote in the letter today about his experience in the movie theater. I'm Mm -hmm. uh, so pleased that you keep telling listeners to get some training, be prepared, think about things. And uh, these guys evidently came into an experience that was thankfully turned out to be you know, learning a learning process for them rather than the end. I'm just in the middle of a book by uh, Galvin De Becker called The Gift of Fear, and I wanted to share that with your listeners. Oh, yeah, he that's is, a good book. It's Gavin De Becker, yes. Yes, yes. It's just incredible, his uh, ability to outline these experiences of people who miss those cues because we live in a society where we just turn all that stuff off. Exactly. And that's, Frankie, that's part of what training will do for you is it starts the brain working, but it's important to get a book. I tell you what, if you want to buy this book for yourself or for anybody else, and this book was actually... Uh, I think 1998 is when it came out, The Gift of Fear. Great book. Get that and also get a copy of Left of Bang, B-A-N-G. And I recently had the author on here, and it is uh, an extension of The Gift of Fear. It is primarily designed for cops, and it was actually developed for the Marines, in identifying threatening behavior before it happens, basically avoiding the, the timeline, Bang being right in the middle of the timeline, and we generally train for what happens after the event starts. And his idea is, well, let's train for before it starts so we can get out of it so we never get to bang. And I think those two are a great combination. Uh, combination. Get The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker and then get Left of Bang by Patrick Van Horn. That would be a great combination. I'm so glad you're in the middle of this book. You are going to enjoy it and it will... You'll never forget it, Joe. And that's the whole thing is that once you read The Gift of Fear, you go, okay... I will never suppress those feelings again. I will pay attention when I get that little tingly thing going off. Uh, you know, it, we talk about situational awareness. Well, it doesn't really help you if you don't act on it, if you don't say, that's odd. I don't want to be here. That's different. I'm going to walk to the other side of the street. And the problem is, and thank you for the call, here's the problem. We end up second-guessing ourselves after the fact. I equate this to a thing that we do as pilots. We make a decision to not go, and then the weather, because we thought the weather was going to be bad, and the weather turns out to be good. We say, well, gee, we could have gone. And so we say, well, I should have gone, which is the wrong thing to say. Because the next time you're going to go, even though it looks like it's going to be bad, and you talk yourself into going, because the last time it turned out to not be so, you have to program yourself to say, Okay, it turned out to be nothing, but it was a good decision. I did cross the street, and maybe nothing was going to happen. That's still a good decision. You're programming yourself to take action. One of the people that I talk with this stuff, I talk with about this stuff, and about training, and about mindset, 
and frankly about a lot of things with guns and the gun world is Jim Shepard. He is the creator of the shooting wire, the outdoor wire, the tactical wire, and a bunch of other wires. If you're not getting them, shame on you. They're uh, daily and several times a week, and they're free emails. Jim, thank you for being here, my buddy. Thank you very much. And I was sitting here listening to you guys talking and thinking to myself, you know, the mindset that I have to take on for this is I'm batting a thousand in avoiding bad situations. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't I don't know if you you well, have learned from I've your experience. I'm saying I'm process it that way. <laughs> there you go. That, I like that because you're my I, I will go ahead and share this. You're my only buddy I know who's been shot and stabbed and beaten up with a baseball bat. You know, uh, I'm not sure you get along well with people all that much. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't always played well with others. I can say that if I were a dog, my nickname would be Lucky. There you go. But you did learn a lot from this, and I learned from you as a result of that stuff. Well, you know, that it, it's exactly the way to think about it is what have I avoided? I don't know. And sometimes what you don't yes. know is, is exactly what you're looking for. I, and and it's, surprise, it's the surprise, as Holiday yeah. used to say, is no surprise. Yeah. And it's that second guessing where you end up setting yourself up for a future event where you should have crossed the street or you should have said no or you should have just looked at your wife and said, get up, we're leaving the restaurant right now. And then you said, oh, well, I don't know. It really was nothing. No, you have to say, okay, you have to honor that decision that you made at the time with the impetus, the input that you had, the stimulus you had, and say, I don't know what it was, but there's something hit my subconscious that made me do this, and if it does it again, I'm going to react exactly the same way. And you're not going to be wrong if you do that. You know, learning, exactly. learning to be safe is, is work. It's not easy to do. You can always do that. I used to say that it was like uh, you're, you're looking at a golf shot. It's a non-threatening way to explain what we're talking about. And okay. it's 177 yards to the center of the green. It's 167 yards to the middle of the lake or to the middle of the, of the water. Okay. You know you have hit that ball 177 yards with your 7-iron. But you also know you've hit it 8 times out of 10, 160 yards. What are you going <laughs> to do? Well, smart money says you're going to dial back a club to a six iron mm-hmm. and try to hit it further, or you're going to lay mm-hmm. up short of the water, which is the only time you hit it as far as John Daly. But, <laughs> you know, it's the same mindset. You have to manage your way through life, just like you manage your way across a golf course or a shooting course. If you're, you know, in a shooting competition, you have to think, can I make this? Can I make this shot at a dead run or do I risk the tenth of a second practical to slow up? Slow up. Slow is mm-hmm. smooth. Smooth is fast. There you go. Yeah. I just had a guy send me an email. He says, okay, you finally got to me. I just signed up for the Gun Site 250 class. I'm going. And I'm, I told him, I said, send me pictures. Um, I, I always am trying to push training. And you have been through a lot of this training at various places. How do you explain, because you're a good wordsmith, how do you explain to people the value of the kind of training we're talking about, with, whether it's with a Tiger McKee or a gun site or someplace? How, how do you explain that? The way I explain it is the same way I, I explain somebody saying that they're a natural athlete. They'll tell me I'm a natural athlete, lettered in four sports, and my response is always, really, and no coaches. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Like you that. mean you just went out there and knew how to put that cup in that supporter the right way, and you didn't put your shoulder pads on backwards, and you know you got your helmet on straight, had it tight, and somebody didn't ring your bell, or you went out there and knew you couldn't plant that foot and then take another step on the basketball court? That's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's it's, yeah. it's you know it's like saying. I am I am a fully qualified craftsman because I own a shop full of tools. <laughs> I am the last person on earth I'd accuse of being a of being a, a craftsman, but I got plenty of tools. But if I'm going to use well, one, I'm going to go ask somebody who knows how before I do. Well, it was Colonel Jeff Cooper who said, "Just because you have a piano doesn't mean you're a musician." Oh, absolutely. So there, there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> let me let me ask you, as a keen observer of the political world, and uh, you have been, of course, in media uh, for a long time. We had Obama about to make his announcement. He's going to meet now. I see with. Anderson Cooper, uh, Gloria Vanderbilt's little boy, and he's going to have a town hall meeting, and he's going to take some kind of executive action. What are you hearing? What do you think? What do you, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, you know, there's the big meeting tomorrow with Loretta Lynch right. and the attorney general, and I think, I think the gist of that meeting is how much can I get away with? Mm-hmm. And I, what I'm hearing is it's going to be a lot of a lot of saber rattling he's going to do a lot of posturing but then he's going to do basically the same thing that he has done about everything important in this country and he's, he will fold when the chips are down um hmm. he's going to go after the loopholes you know he's going to the vaunted gun show loophole he's going to try to ban assault weapons he's going to do all the buzzword things Mm-hmm. But then he's going to find out he doesn't have enough juice. Well, the juice isn't going to be worth the squeeze, I don't think, is what he's going to find out. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of people in Washington are saying, you know, don't underestimate him. And the other one, the other thing they say is don't underestimate how vindictive he can be. Oh, that's for sure. Uh, I, I do believe that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, he is, he's, he's as petulant as a three-year-old when he doesn't get what he wants. But he has gone out here and and has done what he does best, which is, you know, offer a lot of words and not a lot of action. And there's a lot of capital out there to be burned in this one. But I don't think he's going to get a lot done. All right, we're talking with Jim Shepard from The Shooting Wire, The Tactical Wire, and a bunch of other things out there. He's a, a media guy. Jim, hold on a second. When we come back, I want to talk about the media. You have been at, so you were actually one of the original employees, founders of CNN. A lot of people don't know that. When I come back, I want to talk about the influence of Bloomberg and how it has changed everything. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. The world can be a dangerous place. Gear up with the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. Equipping your firearm with laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com and receive a free copy of our new laser training video, The Laser's Edge, Crimson Trace. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. There's a rise in home invasions in America, and you need to be ready. Ready to protect yourself and your family. The Bedside Backup from Crossbreed Holsters keeps your gun at your bedside ready to go. It also folds flat for easy storage and travel. Take it with you and use with any hotel bed. To see more, go to CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. The Bedside Backup is not a child safety device. It's time for the Brownells Trivia Question. Brownells, serious about firearms since 1939. Are you a gun know-it-all? Well, you may have a chance to win the Brownell Gun Talk FN SCAR 17S Dream Gun and a trip to the NRA show in Louisville, Kentucky, May 19th through the 22nd. Here we go. Who was not one of the early leaders of the National Rifle Association? General George Wingate, General Ambrose Burnside, or General Robert E. Lee? To answer and have a chance to win, go to brownells.com slash gun talk. That's brownells.com slash gun talk. When it comes to firearms, Brownells has more, knows more, and does more. And guarantees it all forever. Brownells is serious about firearms. Welcome back. 
866 Talk Gun get you in here. We're talking with Jim Shepard from Shooting Wire, et cetera, et cetera. Jim, explain to people what the wires are, because I know they hear me say that, but I'm not sure if you don't haven't seen it, you don't really know what they are. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, we are a a group of daily electronic news services. If you think of uh, Associated Press or United Press International or even uh, Business Wire or something like that, that's what we are. We uh, focus on the industry. That's what I started it for 15 years ago. But um, word got out to the consumer, and we kind of broadened our focus, and we're sort of a daily newspaper of what's going on in the business. Okay, and you've got the tactical wire, the shooting wire, and the outdoor wire, as well as the fishing and several others. Birding? Uh, fishing, birding, archery. Um, gosh, what else? There's, there's you don't even know how many you have now. <laughs> I don't even know how many there are anymore. Thank God we have editors, which is, uh, which is the subject matter expert. And we also have a, a wire called Ready for Anything, which is a uh, preparedness wire that uh, uh-huh. is not like a it's, – it, it's, the, the title's kind of um, odd because the concept was we didn't want to be a preparedness service that was giving you recipes for the family dog after six months in the in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to prepare you for the, you know, to prepare you for the things that you face every day, whether it be here's some things you should always have in your car to here's what you should happen when the grid goes down. You know, this is you better know how to do this. It's again, it's more about situational awareness than it is, you know, the when the end of the world as we know it hits, because when that happens, most of this stuff's going to be out the window anyway. No, no, yeah, so, uh, not, very little of it's going to matter at that point. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter if I have batteries for my radio if there's nobody broadcasting. There you go. All right, let me switch back here. As I mentioned before we hit the break, uh, (laughs) you were one of the first principals at CNN. You have worked in major media, NBC, uh, various places. You understand that world. Explain, if you will, or at least your thoughts. uh, And I, my position is this. I think in the last five years, the big change in the gun rights movement and the gun control movement has been Michael Bloomberg and his purchased influence of and control of the media. What do you think? I I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I would also say the the biggest boost to the common sense approach to guns, which is the gun rights organizations, would be Michael Bloomberg. Because Americans resent somebody trying to buy them. Hmm. And that's what Michael has done. I've known Mike Bloomberg for 25 years. Um, when Bloomberg first started, he was kind of, you know, the kick it around. Nobody had a whole lot of respect for him. And he's a good, you know, he's a good businessman. He had great mm-hmm. news people working for him. Bloomberg's business news is as good or better than anybody's. Okay. But it's his political leanings that are the problem. But you take a guy who is who is absolutely convinced that he's the smartest guy in any room mm-hmm. and knows what's best for everybody, and you give him you no know, twenty five, fifty billion dollars to play with, and he can become a force. And that's exactly what he's done. The thing that's confusing to him, and and I, I have this on pretty good authority, is he can't understand how he can buy all of the influence, but he can't still get what he wants. And that's because individuals don't like being dictated to. You know, those of us in flyover country, that doesn't go well Mm -hmm. with us. You know, to be invited to one of Mike Bloomberg's parties in New York is a big deal. To not be invited to one of Mike Bloomberg's media parties in New York is an even bigger deal. Hmm. And influence... In in that circle, and power is always access. And mm-hmm. if you can't access the people that have the power, you don't have any power. You're dead in Washington as a reporter. In New York, if you got access to everybody, you didn't. What happens is everybody winds up talking to themselves. So it really is an echo chamber because you don't want to uh, irritate or alienate your sources or the people who put you in touch with things. So. No one's going to stand up, for instance, and say, but you know, when you talk about the epidemic of gun violence, but when the Pew Research documents that 
gun violence is down by 50 percent and murders are down by 50 percent. How is that an epidemic? Nobody asked that question. Because they won't have access next time. They'll get cut and off. That's They'll get cut off at the knees. And it happens in the White House more than any place else on planet Earth. But it happens in New York. If you're a business reporter and suddenly you, you know, you're denied access to a company, that's off your beat and and you're crippled in that area. Or they'll find the person that's the, you know, your your equivalent at another organization and start feeding them material. And you start trailing what's going on rather than reporting. Well, that doesn't go well with editors. There's a lot of a lot of dirty little games mm-hmm. that are played that way. And you don't see them when you're doing it because you're busy being a reporter. If you've got a source, that's a good source. You know, you, you cultivate that. You don't realize for a while that you're getting played the same way. <laughs> you know, I'm, well, it's, it's, there's no, it's a dirty little game. And, and the thing about it, you know, you talk about me being one of the original members of CNN. I think CNN probably did more over the last 15 years to hurt journalism than anybody has up to that point because put so much emphasis on live and right now and breaking that there's no time to to verify anything. There's no research done. It's all it's bite it and regurgitate it. It's, it's interesting it's you hear you say that because unfiltered. Uh, a lot of the veteran journalists feel the same way. They look at what passes for news now and say that's just that would never you would have lost your job back then let, tell you what we will I tell you what, let's do this we'll check back in after obama does whatever he is he's going to do and then you and i will get together at shot show in about uh two two and a half weeks you got it all right we will do that and uh we'll just give them one of the websites where they can go to sign up for your wires uh, well you can go to the com and sign up for all of them from there that there you go, and, the, the uh, outdoorwire.com. And, and I highly recommend it. I read them every day. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Great job as always. Always a pleasure having you here. If you don't, you, you want to be informed on all this stuff, you want to know what the latest guns are, what's coming out, what's going on, sign up for the wires. Of course, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Gun Talk over there. We are now open lines. It is a clean slate. You can be part of it. Call me right now, 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk. You're listening to Gun Talk, now on more than 200 great radio stations. Now, here's Tom. All right, now we are open lines. If you'd like to be a part of this madness, (laughs) give me a holler. 866-TALK-GUN or just dial one Tom Talk Gun. That'll get you in here. Um, Colin is called in, line one out of Minnesota. Colin, talk to me. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call. I'm on the road yes, today. I'm returning home from a pheasant hunt and listening to you on 1100 AM to fly. I got a Fargo, North Dakota. I'm jealous. Brief. I love pheasant I'll, hunting. I'll be brief. I'd like to commend the man that buys the NRA memberships for his family. That's just awesome. Secondly, is the NRA is the only organization that gets blamed for crimes that none of its members commit. <laughs> exactly right. Thirdly, uh, my pet peeve is the sportsmen that spend thousands of dollars on ATVs and hunting trips and guns and ammunition and liquor stores and whatnot and won't spend money on an NRA membership. It's shameful. A- Amen, brother. I am there with you. I mean, come on, it's 35 bucks or something to an NRA membership. Yeah, you're right. You're driving a $10,000 ATV. You're spending, you know, thousands of dollars a year on hunting. And we won't even talk about that pickup truck you're driving, and you won't cough up 35 bucks to, to be able to continue to own guns so you can hunt. You're exactly right. Colin, thank you for your call. I appreciate that. Let's go to straight to four. Kenny's with us out of Farmington, New Mexico. Kenny, what did you get for Christmas? Uh, I got a Mossberg MVP LR, and uh, I was That's a wondering nice what... 
type of scope would you prefer for it? I'm wanting to get into long range shooting. You, I'm not even going to go brand with you, okay? Because there are a lot of good brands out there. Um, but you probably need, or it depends on how how long it's long range, but. In the 4 to 12 or even a 6 to 20 something. But the main thing is buy quality, quality, quality. Because inexpensive scopes are worse than nothing, honestly. Because they will break and you're trying to figure out what's going on with your rifle. You're troubleshooting your loads and it turns out it's your scope. And obviously you need one with target turrets that you can dial in. Do you have any experience with long-range competition or shooting, or how are you going to learn to do this? I'm just trying to get into it. I'm actually a reserve for our local sheriff's department, so Mm -hmm. I have experience with handguns, and I hunt, too. But I've been talking with a lot of the snipers for the sheriff's department, and uh, I'm I'm looking into getting to maybe competing or just having fun with it, going out with those guys. Good deal. They they will know their stuff, but here's one thing to understand. Uh, police snipers do not take long shots by just the nature of their work. Uh, the typical shot by a police sniper, the number I heard was actually under 100 yards, which makes sense. I mean, they're going to be able to get close to a hostage situation as opposed to a military sniper where they're taking some long shots. But if you are working with trained snipers, they will know the gear and they will know the technique, and the technique is really important. This is a skill that you can develop. Uh, if there's a place that does long-range shooting competitions out there, find you know those guys, get together with them, start shooting with them. You will love it. It is so much fun. It is like the ultimate in gun geekiness is to do <laughs> long-range rifle shooting. And that's a very nice rifle, Kenny, so I wish you luck with it. Thank you for the call, sir. Uh, three, Lance, Waco, Texas. Hey, yes, Lance. sir. Thank you, Tom. I love your show. Thank you. Hey, listen, I heard a rumor that I can either confirm or completely bunk, and I figured if anybody would know the answer, you you got to be the guy to know. Um, I heard from someone in law enforcement that's been in there for, uh, I'd say, a long time, that they were going to bring suppressors out from under the NFA this year. Have you heard anything about that? There's been a lot of talk about that. There's actually been a bill introduced in Congress. It's called the Hearing Protection Act, which is a smart a name for a bill, because, of course, suppressors do, in fact, help you preserve your hearing. Uh, even if it made it through both uh, houses of Congress, I do not believe that our president would sign anything that is pro-gun. So I don't know where we end up with that. I understand. I just also, I'll just as a side note, then I'll let you go, just say that, um, you know, these suppressors are incredibly cheap and easy just to make it home yourself and there's dozens of teenagers that'll show you how to do it on youtube yet none of our shootings have have had silencers on them as far as i can tell none of the mass shooters or anybody else for that matter and i'm just wondering why in the world they were still under the nfa in the first place but thanks tom i love your show and have a great weekend happy new year appreciate it lance let me quickly add yes the pressures are simple fairly simple. I mean, the good ones are take a lot of uh, design and work. But yeah, you can make a, uh, a simple suppressor yourself. You can also spend time in the federal penitentiary for doing so. Don't screw around with this, okay? Because if you do this, you will tell a buddy. Your buddy will tell a buddy. And somebody's going to tell the wrong person. And then there's going to be either a knock on the door or there are going to be armed people with body armor coming through your door. And you're going to go spend time at Club Fed. If you want a suppressor, buy a suppressor, pay the registration fee on it, get the stamp, do it the right way. This is not something to mess with. It's like, yeah, you could juggle cobras, but it's not such a great idea, okay? Ah, okay, um, let's do this. Let's take... Uh, John out of Arkansas, real quickly on line two. Hey, John. Yes, uh, this past holiday, everybody out at midnight firing their firearms, making lots of noise. When that happens, I always wonder about the unexpected bullet coming my way. And I was wondering if you had some suggestions or knew where I might look for ways where I can 
reduce my risk from accidentally catching a round that comes through the house. Do you really have people shooting guns in the air for New Year's? Oh, absolutely. Indeed, around here in this neighborhood, I think every now and then they pull in front of each other's houses and fire off guns just as a way of saying they care. Um, you don't need a bulletproof house. You need a different address. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering, you know, things like tile board would make much of a difference as compared to gypsum board or cement siding versus wood siding or, you know, you know, I mean, yeah, you can always try to run and hide from problems, but I've never had much luck doing that. It, somehow the no, bad no, 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 no. I, I, I know it was it was an attempt at being cute, but I'm absolutely quite serious. If you're having more than one incident a year of people shooting around your house, you need to move. I'm as serious as I can be about this. Well, Tom, you know I haven't lived anywhere where that was not the case. Oddly enough. And wow! That, uh, well, I, yeah, and here's the say, other part, and and I've never lived anywhere where that was the case. Because I'm out in the cotton fields right now, and I used to live in a big city, and well, there always seems to be folks misbehaving. Now they might be a block over or so, but yeah, you know, firearms being shot off on the Fourth of July and on New Year's, and that seems to be an American tradition. Um, no, actually, it's not. I don't know where you've been living, my friend, but I have lived a lot of places in this country I have never lived anywhere where that was the norm uh, like I say if, if I lived the place like that I would be moving 866 talk gun get you in here I'll be right back who will you trust with your guns and valuables Liberty safes are the best built and most secure safes on the planet. They sell more gun safes than any other brand. It's about trust earned through performance. If your Liberty Safe is damaged by fire or attempted break-in, they'll send a new safe right to your home. Protection from thieves and fire. Trust the number one maker of quality gun safes. LibertySafe.com You're at a gun store and your phone tells you about hot deals. Want to know about special offers? No problem when you have Gun Dealio, the free app for your smartphone. Gun Dealio delivers the latest deals on guns, ammo, and extras direct to your phone. Don't overpay for your shooting gear. Get Gun Dealio. It's free at the App Store and Google Play. Trigger the deals with Gun Dealio. Gundealio.com. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. The Ruger American Rifle is a 100% American-made firearm that offers outstanding performance at a great price. Available in standard size and compact models, it features power bedding integral bedding blocks, a Ruger Marksman adjustable trigger, a flush fit four-round rotary magazine, and a three-lug bolt with 70-degree throw. Compact models feature a shorter length of pull and a shorter barrel for a reduction in overall length of more than five inches. The Ruger American Rifle, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. All right, 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Line 3, Paul's with us out of Grants Pass, Oregon. Hello, Paul. Uh, good afternoon. Do you remember a tremendous writer? You're a writer. Maybe your dad might have known him, but his name was Russell Annabelle. I think he's been gone for a long time and never knew anything about him, but he wrote great stories. 
of hunting and would, fishing and sports afield. Does that name ring a bell with you? Oh, yeah. I, I was a fan. I never knew him. I don't know if Dad may have known him, but, yeah, that, you're exactly right. I and mean, if you like a good story well told, Russell Annabelle, you just about can't do any better than that. No, I agree. I was a kid when he when I first came across him, and, boy, I was really taken by him. And then all of a sudden he dropped off, and I, I guess he died. It's been some time ago. I just yeah, wondered if you might have known anything about him or anything. So, uh, But I thank you so much, and I thank you so much for the work you're doing on the program. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. I, I really do. Uh, you notice I haven't talked a lot today about the new law in Texas where those who have a carry permit can now carry openly. There was much wringing of hands and gnashing of teeth about the blood in the streets and how it's just terrible and businesses the the major one of the major grocery stores there put up a no open carry sign the no concealed carry sign is called the 30 06 306 sign and this is the 307 that relates to the regulation number and HEB is the big grocery chain and they put up the no open carry signs the reason i haven't talked about it a lot is it's not going to amount to anything. It has nothing to do with long guns. It's just strictly handguns, and you have to carry in a, I believe it's a belt holster or a shoulder holster. And you have to have a carry permit, a concealed carry permit, before you can carry openly. So the same people who have not been committing crimes are going to, again, not commit crimes. There may be a few people who get a little upset or go kind of go, you know, their eyes will... I, Brows will rise a little bit when they first see somebody carrying a gun. But generally, they get over that pretty quickly. In fact, we'll talk about that in the after show today, about open carry as a social experiment. And what are the reactions that you get? Do you open carry? Have you open carry? Do you still? I'm curious if you have been part of that, by all means, give us a holler, 866-TALK-GUN. Now, let's see. Oh, this is interesting. The Texas Attorney General says banning guns in college dorms violates the new law. The Attorney General of Texas said that banning guns in college dorm rooms violates the state's newly approved campus carry law and also opined on setting limits for carrying weapons onto public school grounds and into multi-use government buildings. Fascinating. A lot of things going on. A lot of things going on on the state level. I will return to a common theme. You have to be part of your state group as well as you have to be supportive of national groups. Now, if it were me and I got to make the rules, I would say you ought to belong to the NRA and the Second Amendment Foundation both, because I think they both do great things. The NRA primarily on the legislative side, and the Second Amendment Foundation primarily on the litigation, court, lawsuit side, because they've just been kicking rear ends on, on that level. And it takes money to do both. And I... For the life of me, do not understand why every gun owner is not a member of the NRA. At at the very least, why everybody who listens to gun talk is not a member of the NRA. And I guess the other thing, because this is our first show of 2016 as we head toward racing toward a national election, you must be registered to vote. Uh, It's interesting. A lot of people actually think they're registered and they're not. Verify that you are, and then you have to make the commitment to vote. To do anything less is to thumb your nose at the founding fathers, at the people who signed the Declaration of Independence, the people who wrote and signed the Constitution. To do less than that is to thumb your nose at our military veterans, those who have served, those who have died would you do that in person to a veteran probably not I'm not sure it's not the same thing it's just food for thought if you're an open carry person give us a holler 866-TALK-GUN be right back with more gun talk
All righty. Um, I had intended to just talk for the next couple of minutes, but uh, we got a couple of calls here. I want to take at least one of these. I want to get Rodney in here on line three. Hey, uh, Rodney, uh, you there? Yes, sir. All right. What you looking for? Okay. I I was thinking about buying a 458 Winchester Magnum that a friend of mine has for sale. Hmm. Um, with the intention of going after some dangerous game in the near future, but everyone telling me the 458 Win Mag is a terrible ca- cartridge for it. And, you know, I was looking on it, and it looks like most of the stories of it, like, failing is from, like, the 60s and 70s mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. they didn't have good bullets. Yes. Is that still the case today? Uh, it's still the case that those stories are from the 50s and 60s. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, first of all, let me ask you a question. What dangerous game? What are we talking about hunting? I want to go to Africa and get a Cape Buffalo. That's been like my dream. Look, pick the gun you want. A 458 with good bullets is a fabulous round. 416s are great also. Uh, flip a coin if you like this guy's gun and you can get it at a good price. Uh, you are exactly spot on. The stories of the failures with the 458 are with older bullets, uh, back when we just had simple mushrooming bullets. We have now controlled expansion bullets. We also have really good solids. Um, I would not hesitate to hunt Cape Buffalo, Elephant, Lion, whatever, with a 458. I think it's a great round. Having said that, 416 is you know equally good, and some would say even better. So it really is one of those where you can just pick one and, and don't worry about it. But if it's a good deal and you like the rifle and you want to do the deal, get it. By, by all means, do that. Appreciate that, Rodney. Um, and we're going to, uh, some of you, if you're on hold right now, just stay there. We're going we're gonna to get to you. Uh, we probably have to pull you into the after show. A couple of things I want to get out here. New Year's resolutions. Uh, trying not to be preachy here, just trying to help people understand. And you, you, people write and say, you know, I've been listening to you, and finally we had this event in a movie theater where this guy was basically stalking my wife, and I kind of ignored it. And I didn't really react, even though my senses were alerted and et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to ask you, okay, for your family, for yourself. And remember, if something happens to you, it happens to your family. So there's no difference. It's not like, well, gee, my family's not here, so I'm not going to have to worry about protecting them. No, 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 no. If it happens to you, it happens to them. If they lose you, it's a horrendous event. If you would, make a commitment. We put out some really good DVDs on concealed carry and gunfighting. If you use our Gun Dealio app, you can get it for 15% off. If you go to shopguntalk.com, it's a start. It's not active training. It's not working with a trainer, but it's a start. And what it does is it opens you up to, wow, there's more to this than I understood. And that in itself is worthwhile. And then you read a couple of the books. You get Tiger McKee's The Book of Two Guns. Uh, you get the book Left of Bang. And you go, wow, there's more to this than I realized. And then you start thinking, okay, I'm going to have to start giving this a lot more thought. And when you do that, you become a student of this subject. And when you become a student of this, you get better at it. You game it out. You plan it. If this happens, I will do that. Now you're becoming safer. And frankly, there's no better resolution for the new year. There's no better late Christmas present that you can give to your entire family than for you to be safer. Of course, that applies if you're with them, but it also applies if you're not with them. I would just ask you to please consider making that commitment and saying, this year I'm going to do it. Not just this year, this month I'm going to start. Maybe this week. Maybe today. In the meantime, go shooting, take somebody with you, take some friends out, have some fun at the range, and we will see you next week right here on Gun Talk.